Hallelujah. We welcome each and every one of you today to this awesome worship experience. Those of you that are online today, we welcome you also. We praise God for you. Let's just lift our hands in the presence of God. Hallelujah. As we go before our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Father, for thy kingdom has come. And we thank you, Lord, that your will was done on this resurrection Sunday when your son laid down his life for us that we could have eternal life with you. When he laid down his life so that we could be forgiven our sins. When he laid down his life so that we can have life abundantly. Father, we bless you. Jesus, we love you and we adore you. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place today. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to the hearts of each and every soul in this place. And if someone does not know you as Lord and Savior, God, open up their hearts, open up their eyes, open up their come in this house we pray let deliverance come let healing come let your love fill this place in the blessed name of Jesus Christ come on everybody let's praise the Lord hallelujah
we sit up on our feet and just give our God some praise this morning. We're here to celebrate the risen Savior. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, my God lives. Come on. Open up your mouth all over the sanctuary. Shout it out. Say, my God lives. Come on, all over the balcony. Shout, my God lives. Let's go. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before.
this today. Come on, tell the neighbor on the other side, say, neighbor, help me lift Jesus today. If you came to lift him, open your mouth and scream one more time.
but we gotta get out of here. But I need to lift the high praise together. One more time, everybody say, And in this moment where we prepare to go to God in prayer, we ask that you uh, would, in fact, pray for those uh, who are part of our church family who are dealing with all manners of things going on now. If you would keep in prayer the neighbor that's sitting next to you because you don't know how much they need your prayers. Today, we regret to announce the passing of Sister Heloise Jenkins. We also regret to announce the passing of Sister Natalie Coggins, who was a stewardess on uh, steward board for the North F. And also, I'm sorry, for the North F. Taylor Missionary Society society as well as the lay organization and so we are praying for those families and we ask right where you are that you would just begin to pray maybe there's someone on your heart someone on your mind that's standing in need of prayer would you go to God right where you are father in the name of Jesus today we want to tell you thank you thank you for your power thank you for your love thank you for your greatness thank you for knowing what we needed before we could even need it thank you for sending us a savior named Jesus Christ father today before we ask you for anything. We want to thank you for the shed blood of Jesus on Calvary. Thank you that it gave us life. Thank you that it gave us access. Thank you, Father, that it gave us liberty. Thank you that we are still here today because of the sacrifice of your son. And so now, God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that whoever came into this worship experience feeling down, burdened, and depressed and heavy because of the crosses that they are bearing in their lives. I pray today that the quickening power of the Lord Jesus Christ would come through the word and through the worship and through the witness and allow someone to get up out of their grave situation right now. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would stop by and see about those who are in need. Father, touch those who are laying on beds of affliction. Father, touch those who are bereaved and those who are looking for the comforter. We ask right now that you would begin to repair broken marriages and heal. Oh God, broken people and you will begin to mend the broken pieces. Father, put us back together again. We believe in your power. We believe that you are able. We know that you can do it. And so Father, we put our faith on and now we ask that you would have your way in this worship. God, move in this service in a way that by the time we get home, our testimony will be that it was good for us to be in the presence of the Lord. Father, we ask that you would throw your weight around in this sanctuary. Let your fire and your power fall in this house until lives are changed and souls are saved and people are redeemed. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch our pastor right now. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, you would give her strength and more strength. Give her grace and more grace. Give her power and more power. Give her oil and more oil. Father, do a new thing and now word her mouth for what we stand in need of and when we leave this place, Father, let transformation be the outcome and because we know that it is done that 
it is so and it is well. We give you glory right now like it's already happened for us. In Jesus name, if you believe it's done, if you believe it's so, if you believe it's well, somebody ought to shout amen. Somebody ought to shout amen. Hallelujah. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Then they and many other women had come with him to Jerusalem. Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life.
the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are so grateful. Would you help me to praise God for the ALDM as well as our worship team who have blessed us today. We give God glory, we give God honor, we give God praise. It's a good day to be in the presence of the Lord, amen. Do me a favor, look at somebody beside you and tell them, neighbor, I'm glad you came to church today. Hallelujah, and so glad to be sitting next to you. We wanna take this time to extend a welcome to all of those who are visiting with us for the very first time. Those of you who are visiting with the Greater Allen Cathedral for the first time, would you do me a favor and stand all over this building that we may recognize you, amen, that we may honor you, amen, amen. 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 Members of Allen, would you do me a favor and reach out to those who are visiting with us and give them a hug, give them a five, give them a pound, give them whatever they feel comfortable with and let them know they are welcomed into this house. Amen. As well as those of you who are streaming online, we want to welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Elaine Flake, as well as our pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Floyd Flake. We welcome you here to the Greater Allen AME Cathedral of New York and we pray that by the end of this worship experience, if you don't have a church home, that you will consider making Greater Allen your home because we would love to have you as a part of our family. Somebody shout amen. Well, it's Resurrection Sunday, church. Anybody glad about it? Amen. And we are so excited to be in this house, and we know that God is going to send a word that is going to resurrect us out of our very dry situations, and we are so grateful today. The coffee hour downstairs is being hosted by the Young Men's Rights of passage and so we ask that you all would in fact stop by there and visit and support that ministry. The communications ministry is looking for a few good volunteers to look through our archives, to gather, to sort, to organize the photographs as well as the digital media uh, that will be used for our upcoming legacy events. So if this sounds like something you want to do, the communications ministry would love to have you. If you got a knack for scrapbooking and digital archiving and all of those things, where you are the person that we are looking for. So we ask that you would, in fact, uh, register, and that committee registration will begin today, and you can find that on the church's website. Our women's virtual Bible study will resume tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Let the church say 7.30. Amen. We got to put it in our spirits. We want to make sure that you are there and you are streaming that via our church website. Our pastor is teaching every week the unadulterated word of God. And we want to make sure that you have your space on that virtual platform. The Ignite Youth Ministry and Sunday School invites you to attend um, their resurrection program that's going on right now downstairs. Uh, They are doing a play right in the banquet hall. And so you are welcome. Those of you who have family or children there, you are welcome to go down and stop by and see them. The Chosen's Men Assembly will meet on next Saturday, April the 6th from 8.30 a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. in the lower level. Our very own, the Reverend Dr. Alfonso Wyatt will facilitate a mentoring session. Y'all can clap for Reverend Wyatt. Amen. We love him. He will be facilitating a mentoring session for the men's ministry and the boys' rites of passage. And guess what? We always know how to get you in the building. Breakfast will in fact be served. Amen. I I need some women to make some noise in the room. Come on, women, women, women. Now the women who know that the Holy Ghost is going to meet us April the 11th through the 13th at the Stanford Marriott located in Stanford, Connecticut. Come on, women's conference attendees, make some noise in the room. Amen. Conference registration is available online and in the rotunda. Uh, In-person registration is closed, but we are 
offering a virtual option that will allow you to stream a portion of our women's conference. Virtual registration and the details are available on the church website. Uh, the Cancer Support Ministry will be having a mammogram van in the church parking lot on Tuesday, April the 23rd. We want you to register in the Narthex or at the church office Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Or you can also contact the church office in order to register. All right, the women's ministry will host an afternoon tea party. The theme is spilling the tea with the mentor and the mentee. Join us on Saturday, April the 26th between 2 o'clock p.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. And we invite you to wear afternoon tea time attire to include fashionable hats and fascinators. Ladies, we are having high tea, all right? Tickets are going on sale next Sunday, April the 7th. All right, do me a favor one more time. If you are excited about this legacy year, make some noise in this sanctuary. In fact, let's give a standing ovation for this legacy weekend. Help me to give God praise for what we are doing here. Oh, I need the church to really participate. Make some noise. This is our legacy weekend. Amen. We are responsible for supporting and upholding this great legacy. And so we want you to save the day. The legacy luncheon will take place Saturday, May 18th at the Floral Terrace at 12 o'clock p.m. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow, Monday, April the 1st, online at www.allencathedral.org. Tickets will not be available for in-person purchase or table reservations. Uh, the complete Bible study and special event schedule is available on the church website at www.allencathedral.org and you can also download our church app and subscribe to receive our weekly newsletter. I'm going to turn to communications now and ask that they will give you a very special Legacy Weekend video. The Flake Legacy Weekend, Friday, May 31st to Sunday, June 2nd. This will be an exciting weekend of nostalgic gatherings, sharing fond memories and creating new ones with cherished friends and family as we honor and celebrate the enduring impact of the Flake Legacy on our lives. Friday night, various ministries will celebrate in their own special way. Saturday, June 1st is Legacy Community Day. The day will begin with prayer at 10 a.m. in the Cathedral Sanctuary, followed by special presentations in parking lot number two. And then Legacy Weekend culminates on Sunday, June 2nd with guest preacher Bishop Jacqueline McCullough. You don't want to miss this unforgettable weekend. Visit the website for further details. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We want to have you to know that this weekend is going to be a once in a lifetime special kind of opportunity. So we are calling members past, members present, members that are yet to come. We're calling all of y'all to come and to participate in some event that we are doing that weekend. If you were previously a part of a ministry, make sure that you contact members of those ministries to ensure that you can participate in what is going on. It's given time in the sanctuary. Anybody Everybody grateful for the opportunity to give? Oh, come on. You got to change your perspective. It's giving time in the sanctuary. I thank God every time I get the chance to give because giving only opens up the doorways, the pathways for God to do extraordinary works in my life. And so in this moment, we ask that you will prepare your gifts. There are uh, members of our, our usher board who are moving throughout the sanctuary. And if you are in need of an envelope, you can just make an indication and they will bring it to you. There are multiple ways that you can participate in giving here and that is by our church website at allencathedral.org you can also give on our fancy church mobile app and that's available on iOS and Android you can cash app G-A-C-N-Y you can text the word Allen A-M-E to 833-789-8331 follow the prompts to give we are also available on Givelify you can also scan the QR code that's on the screens to my right or my left and last but certainly not least you can use the good old mail system and send your gift to the Greater Allen Cathedral, 11031 Floyd H. Flake Boulevard, formerly Merrick Boulevard, Jamaica, New York. Anybody I, I'm excited about the opportunity to give, somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. As you prepare to give, we ask that those of you who are giving electronically, that you will make those uh, gifts at this time. For those of you who desire to give in person, we will give you the opportunity to give on, on your exit on your way out of the sanctuary. How many are excited about the 
word of God this morning. Come on, how many are excited about the word of God this morning? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And certainly we have a woman of God here who is going to impart the word of life to us. If you're excited about it, somebody shall preach, Reverend Elaine, and let the Holy Ghost have his way. We're excited about the word because we know that there is a message of hope for all of us. Why? Because it was a Friday afternoon at this hill called Via Della Rosa where this man named Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died for you and for me. But the power of the cross is really the power of decision because Jesus could have come down. I, I said he, he, he deserved the right to walk away. But is there anybody in the sanctuary that's grateful that he decided to hang in there for you and for me? Is there anybody that's grateful that when he could have chosen differently, he still thought enough of you and I and all of our filthy rags to let them hang him up high and let them stretch him out wide. They, they pierced him in his side and they mocked him and they spat on him and he could have come down and yo, he should have come down, but he stayed right there on the cross. And that's why I got a hallelujah today because he hung in there for me. That's why I got to thank you, Jesus, because he hung in there for me. And not only did he hang there, but he stayed there all day Friday. And then he stayed there all day Saturday. I wish I had some sanctified folk that would just rev your head back and shout for all this Sunday morning. Oh, look at somebody and say, he got up with all power in his hand.
He decided, he decided to die. Let's put our hands together and thank God today that Jesus decided to die. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together. Thank God that he decided to die. Amen and amen. And certainly we thank God for this worship experience. Won't you just join me in putting your hands together for our creative arts ministry, our music department, who has not only blessed us today, but I don't know if you realize how difficult that song is that they sang during uh, the... Um, uh, the uh, dance with Alan liturgical dance ministry that's not an easy song to learn and I salute our praise team and certainly I salute the, I do salute the Allen liturgical dance ministry because they always bless us we thank God for sister Naila sister Karen and and sister Rochelle and the entire dance ministry we're grateful to you, not only for that presentation, but even for the processional. It just felt like Resurrection Day. <clears throat> and we are just so grateful, and certainly we salute our communications ministry and our stewardesses and our preachers and officers, each and every one of you. And we certainly welcome all to Resurrection Sunday at Allen. There's no church like Allen Church. I know you say I'm partial, but it's not partiality speaking, it's just fact. There is no church like the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York. Amen and amen. I want to turn your attention to the New Testament book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to just read two verses beginning at verse 19. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. God's power for us who believe in him. That this is the same mighty power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is working in us. Let the people of God say amen. And amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor and help me to uh, pronounce this sermon topic. Say neighbor, the word of the Lord to us today is that there is life after the cross. Now turn to somebody else and say neighbor, the Lord said, you will not die because there's life after this. Whatever you're going through, there's life after this cross. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Now tell the devil it ain't over until God says it's over. Hallelujah. It ain't over until God says it's over. My English, my English degree would say it is not over, but my hood language is it ain't over until God says it's over. <laughs> amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and sisters, on this glorious and magnanimous day, we have gathered to celebrate the reality that the resurrection of Jesus is the one act that changed the very course of human history in a very dynamic, liberating, and never-ending way. Jesus' victory over death, his victory over the grave, his departure from the tomb, brings us a message that is clear. And that message is this, there is life after the crucifixion. The truth is, sisters and brothers, that life will kill us if we let it. But we must never forget the truth 
of God's grace and mercy. My brothers and sisters, we can never lose our faith or our dignity to the attacks or the cruelty or the injustices of others. But instead, we must trust God, even when the world around us attacks us, even when our inner resources begin to weaken, even when we feel like we can't go on, we have to keep on keeping on. Now, there will be schemes, there will be character assaults, there will be crucifixions, but your deliverance from them is already sealed by Jesus Christ. Relationships will end. Seasons of suffering will feel endless. Friends will let you down. Say amen, somebody. And of course, the system will crush crowns of thorns on your head and your heart. And while these things may change us, they will not destroy us because Jesus declares today that there is life after the cross. There's life after every failure, after the job loss, after the breakup, after the betrayal, after the embarrassment. There is life after every enemy attack, uh, every heartbreak, and every stab in the back. As we watched on Good Friday how Jesus handled himself, in fact, as we think about how Jesus handled himself the three years that he ministered on earth, dealing with enemies and oppressors and politicians and religious leaders, I suggest that the very life of Jesus teaches us how to, how to be the best of who we can be in the throes of the worst of times. One writer says, Jesus the model of inner strength at a time of serious public pressure, Jesus stands tall and strong in the face of injustice. And he acknowledges the moment, but he does not give in to the moment. And the word of the Lord to us is that we cannot give in to the dark days that are upon us because there's always life after the crucifixion. Jesus made the religious and political powers hung, uh, angry uh, and they needed to stop him and they did everything they could to stop him. But Jesus shows us that to live for God is to know that God's will must be done in us and we must do our part to build a better world by becoming better believers. Somebody say better. Now what does it take for us to become better believers? I'm glad you asked. Because to become better believers, we must be those who hold on to our faith through every situation. To be better believers means that we will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit even down paths of unknown destinations. To be better believers is to know that, uh, that there will be pain. Yes, we will know the pain of exploded dreams and legal profiling and expected pol uh, unexpected political maneuverings. But in the midst of all of that, we have to commit our lives to the hands of the Lord. It's in God's hands, and we have to be willing to hold God's hands as we start our lives over again every day. And we have, to, in starting our lives over again, we have to be willing to let go of some of the ways of being or some of the uh, people or some of the situations that we have lived with for a while. 
understanding that when we release the old, we should hold on and reach for the new because it is the new that Jesus brings us every day. To be better believers is a constant and continual search for God. Even when our souls are overwhelmed, we still cry out to God. Even when our purpose feels unsure, we commit to holding on to God's hands. But one of the things that we must address in this season is the call that Jesus makes to all of us to be crucified with Christ. Whoever wants to be my disciple, this is the word of the Lord, must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. This is in the Bible. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Know on this Resurrection Sunday that as we are celebrating the resurrection, Jesus has a call on everybody's life. And that call is for us to be crucified with him. Now, before I go further, let me remind us all that even the call to crucifixion should not be uh, uh, our undoing, because Christ has already ensured that there is new life after every crucifixion. Say amen. So let us not forget that as we move forward in this concept of being crucified with Christ, resurrection is sure. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be in despair. We already know that there is life beyond the cross. Everybody say amen. amen. Now historically, crucifixion is a most painful, degrading, and cruel way to die. And we know, uh, from, and, and from what we know about Jesus' death, it is not a quick act, but it is a slow, drawn out process. Uh, it is said that often crucifixion took hours, if not days, depending on the circumstances. But the choir sang it, and we have to reiterate it. Jesus was on the cross, but he decided to be crucified. He decided to be crucified. And beloved, his word to us on this resurrection day is that we too have to decide to die to all of those things, the behaviors, the attitudes, the thoughts. We have to decide to die to all of those things that would separate us from Jesus. I need you to say amen. My favorite writer says that the resurrection of Jesus is about the transformed and transforming presence of Jesus Christ then, now, and always. Resurrection Day is the day that we can know that life begins anew. We must remember that living in Christ is to die to the old. It is to die to the flesh. Now to die to the flesh is to surrender our personal will to the will of Jesus. To die to the flesh means that some of the stuff that we have been clinging to has to be removed from our lives in order for us to walk in his purpose for us. We know that dying to the flesh is a process. It will not happen instantly, but just like the crucifixion of Christ took a, a, a long time, we understand that the process 
of dying to flesh requires that we go through that process of resisting temptation and deciding that we cannot be a slave to our flesh. We cannot be a slave to our desires. We cannot be a slave to the old ways of being, but rather we must decide that we want to be free. Galatians 5 and 24 says, those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the sinful nature with all of his passions and desires, and we now live by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Say amen, everybody. Galatians 2 and 20, uh, we, re we join with Paul and say, I have been crucified with Christ, and I, flesh, no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, the life I now live, Paul says, is so much better than it used to be because now I am doing everything I can to live by faith and not by the flesh. I want to live by faith in the Son of God. And so we decide to die to lust. We decide to die to arrogance and tempers and, and anger and gluttony and addiction and fear. And as we die to those things, the more Christ can come in and fill our lives. As we get rid of the old, we make room for the new. We make room for Christ. As our flesh decreases or dies, the more Christ increases and lives in us. Thank you, Jesus. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to shed old ways. Anybody know that's right? We can shed old addictions and old attitudes and old personalities, and we can become new creatures in Christ. And understand this, as we are dying to the flesh, we are becoming sanctified more and more. And church, we have to be willing to nail our flesh to the cross, knowing that we will be resurrected to a new and better life because the flesh no longer has control of us. Hallelujah. And we need to be those who understand the importance of not letting our flesh control us. Your flesh will get you in trouble every time. Your big mouth can get you in trouble. Your bad attitude will get you in trouble. But because we have decided to crucify our flesh, amen, and because we have decided that our deepest desire is righteousness, then we understand that as we step back from flesh and move closer to Jesus, that we are no longer controlled by the old, but we are controlled by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I need you to say amen. And so... This resurrection, this resurrection message is that without death, there can be no resurrection. And today, we are claiming new life beyond the cross because we understand that we are nailing some stuff to the cross and we are not going to allow it to live again. 
the word of the Lord to you and the word of the Lord to me is that crucifixion kills, yes, but crucifixion also brings new life. Crucifixion also brings miracles. And it also brings dynamic moves of God. You ought to put your hands together. Everyone who is living in Christ should be celebrating today because dying to the old, dying to flesh, is bringing us out of our dark days and taking us into new days. Dying to the flesh amen, will ultimately, listen, bring out the best in us. Say amen, everybody. And we ought to be praising God today because we have a new life in Christ and we are walking in resurrection power. The Lord has brought out the good in me. The Lord is bringing me, letting me see how strong I really am. And I say without apology that our Good Friday seasons are the doorway to resurrection power. Our Good Friday seasons are the doorway to a miraculous new day. Our resurrection, our Good Friday seasons are the doorway, amen, to a better self. I need you to pray with me. And hallelujah is the shout that should be in our spirits because Jesus, amen, has promised us that though afflictions come, Though trouble comes, resurrection is inevitable because my hand is on you. What appears to be the end is never the end. What appears to be uh, uh, unrepairable can be repaired, say amen. Because Jesus is always calling us beyond the cross to wholeness. Jesus calls us to understand that when we get on the other side of the cross, we will be fuller and wiser and stronger and smarter and greater and holier. When we get beyond the cross to the resurrection, uh, we will look at our hands and our hands will look new. We can look at our feet and they will to when we get beyond the cross. Our souls will look back and wonder how we got over. When we get beyond the cross, we'll be shouting because what was meant to kill us did not kill us, but it made us stronger. When we get on the other side of the darkness, on the other side of the crucifixion, on the other side of the pettiness uh, on the other side uh, of, 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 of all of the attacks, we will not be able to take credit for ourselves, but we will be able to stand and declare that if it had not been for the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know where I would be. But because he put his hands on me, because he touched me, I can declare without hesitation that God's grace and God's mercy is working in my life unlike I could have ever imagined. And today, on this Resurrection Sunday, declare with me, I'm on my way to becoming more. I'm on my way to becoming stronger. I'm on my way to breaking spiritual bondages. Uh, get ready, friends. Uh, get ready, neighbors. Uh, get ready for life that is beyond the uh, uh, grave and get ready to walk in the resurrection power that unfolds in our lives every day. Oh, come on, join with me and say, I'm walking away today. 
I'm walking away from graves of anger and guilt and procrastination and jealousy and dishonesty and excuse making. Today, Resurrection Sunday, I've decided that I'm claiming my life and I'm escaping from the thoughts of arrogance and inferiority and hopelessness and helplessness and hatred and unforgiveness. Somebody shout today. Today I'm refusing to be boxed in by my past. I won't be hemmed in by my haters. I won't be pinned down by feelings of failure or inadequacy or fear. Somebody shout resurrection uh, because I know that the Lord has empowered me to succeed. The Lord has empowered me to be free. The Lord has empowered me to overcome setbacks. Uh, he He's enabled me to break away from my addictions. Uh, I thank God today for resurrection power because it has made all the difference in my life. Uh, I need you to put your hands together. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. God has set it in motion that what they try to do us cannot be done because he will be to us everything that we need. Somebody shout everything. He will be our shepherd. He will be our advocate. He will be our conquering king. He is our mediator. He is our bread. He is our living water. He is our dwelling place. He is our leader. He is our anchor. He is our wisdom. He is our peace. He he is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our restorer. He is our teacher. He is everything we need. He is our power. He is our strength. He is our friend. He is our victory. He's our alpha. He's our omega. He's our all in all. And everything he does, we can thank him for it because it's already been set up. He's all already made sure that the devil cannot destroy us. He's already made sure that grief will not take us out. He's already ensured that after every dark season, after every cross, after every crucifixion, there is a resurrection. So walk on, children. Don't you get weary. Walk on, soldiers. Keep fighting the battle. Walk on and declare that there is victory on the other side. Oh, you ought to jump up. Put your hands together and give God praise. Praise him right now because you understand that he's working in all that mess. He's working in all that pain. He's working in all those feelings that are trying to take your life. He's working in it for our good. And he has declared that he will give you victory on the other side. And I'm a witness that he will do it. In fact, turn to your neighbor and say, I know he will. I know he will. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will open the door. The Lord will do what you need to be done. Just praise him now and declare. I'm living my best life. I'm living my best life. Even in the midst of pain. I'm living my best life. Even in the midst of disappointment. I'm living my best life. Because Jesus said, Jesus said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Hallelujah. The devil can't do it. Your enemies can't do it. The system can't do it. God declares there is life. There is life. There is purpose. There is meaning. There is victory. There is Somebody say yes. Somebody shout, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. I've got victory in Jesus. I've got victory. Come on, 
shake somebody's hand, I'm finished, and tell them I'm walking in resurrection power, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you need to talk to the devil right now and declare, I decree over my own life that you will not stop me because the Lord has already designed it that I shall be free. I shall be strong. I will not lose my mind. I will not go crazy. I will not resort to substances. I will not be addicted, but rather I shall be free. Come on, resurrection pal. Claim it over your life. Claim it over the life of your children. Claim it over the life of your friends who are about to lose their minds. Claim it. We are free in Jesus. And what the devil tried to do to me shall not be done. Because I belong to him. He belongs to me. And it does not yet appear what I shall be. Somebody say yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody claim it. Resurrection power. Hallelujah. And I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with Jesus. Hallelujah. And so if you're in this house and you're saying, I've never given my life to Jesus Christ, and I want to make that commitment right now today, come on, we invite you to come. Come on, don't allow anybody or anything to keep you from taking that step of faith in the name of Jesus. 
As a matter of fact, maybe you've already given your life to the Lord, but you have strayed far away from God. We invite you to come as well. There's plenty of good room in the Lord's house. Now, if you're here today and you're without a church home, then we invite you to come and unite with our church family. We want you to know that you don't have to be perfect in order to join this church. Hallelujah. For we serve a perfect Savior who has given us his righteousness. So we welcome you. Come on, wherever you are. Man, woman, boy, or girl, we invite you to come to unite with our church family or to give your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, put your blessed hands together even as they're coming right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. God bless you, my brother. Come on, even in the balcony, come on down. We'll wait for you.
his name. Come on. Listen. Your fried chicken is going to be there. And your fried fish is going to be there too. But we give God praise for those who have come to him today. Hallelujah. You went 46 days. You can wait a few more minutes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Listen, for those who have come to this altar, we're just going to pray this prayer of salvation, and then we're going to praise our way on out. Amen. I want you to repeat these words after me. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you live that you perform miracles, that you died on the cross for my sins. Holy Spirit, fill me, lead me, seal me, and secure a place for me in eternity. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus rest, rule, and abide name that is above every other name to this name we ascribe majesty dominion and power now and forevermore everybody say amen God bless you All are encouraged to attend our weekly Bible studies, young adults on Mondays, church-wide on Wednesdays, men on Thursdays, and couples on Saturdays. All Bible studies are virtual and begin at 7 o'clock p.m. Visit the website for login and streaming details. Women's Season Virtual Bible Study with Rev. Elaine continues tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. The book of study is Overcoming Fear, Worry, and Anxiety, authored by Elise Fitzpatrick. Stream on the church website. All men are invited to attend Chosen Men's Assembly Saturday, April 6th at 8.30 a.m. at the Cathedral. This is a special mentoring session for the men's ministry and boys' rites of passage, facilitated by Dr. Alfonso Wyatt. Breakfast will be served. The Communications Archival Committee is seeking volunteers to help gather, sort, and organize photographs and digital media to be used for the upcoming legacy celebrations and across our digital platforms. Committee registration is open. Ladies, join us for Women's Conference April 11th through the 13th at the Stanford Marriott in Stanford, Connecticut. Registration and further details are available online at www.gacwomen.org. On Tuesday, April 23rd, the Cancer Support Ministry will have a free mammogram screening bus in the church parking lot from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Contact the church office to register. Save the date for the Legacy Luncheon, Saturday, May 18th at Floral Terrace at 12 o'clock p.m. Tickets will go on sale Monday, April 1st in person and online. The Flake Legacy Weekend will take place Friday, May 31st to Sunday, June 2nd. Join us for an exciting weekend of nostalgic gatherings and sharing and creating fond memories with cherished friends and family as we honor and celebrate the enduring impact of the Flake Legacy on our lives. Friday night, various ministries will celebrate in their own special way. Then on Saturday, we will host a Legacy Community Day starting with prayer at 10 a.m., followed by special celebrations in parking lot two. The weekend will culminate on Sunday with guest preacher Bishop Jacqueline McCullough. For more information regarding our virtual, hybrid, and on-site events, please visit our website at www.allencathedral.org.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. We invite you to stay connected with us on our website at allencathedral.org and across our social platforms, including our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Give tithes and offerings on our website and mobile app, which can be downloaded from the iTunes store and Google Play. Visit our website and listen to our daily prayers, watch Bible studies, see featured videos, and more on our mobile app and the church website. Subscribe to receive our weekly digital event calendar and text alerts by going to the church website at allencathedral.org and follow the prompts to subscribe. You are invited to join us on our live prayer line weeknights at 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. where you will hear from Pastor Elaine Flake and friends. The dial-in details are available on our website. Again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. Our church doors are open. We would love to worship with you in person Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. There is a seat for you, so join us. We continue to keep your safety and health in mind. So stay connected throughout the week, and we look forward to worshiping with you again next week. To God be the glory.